Hi, it's Ken Hadrick, Dean of the Pi Academy, and I hope you don't go away because I'm about to show you five ways to avoid one of the most common pie making problems that I hear about from you. So stick around. So I'm not exaggerating when I say that about seven days a week, at least once or twice a day, I get an email from someone who's having a pie dough meltdown because for either the fifth or maybe the 50th time, they've tried to roll out their dough and it just keeps cracking and falling apart and making a mess. Now, in case you've never had or heard a pie dough meltdown, it often goes something like this. Ah, Ken, I'm having fits. I'm pulling my hair out. I'm going to kick the dog and my husband's going to leave me if I can't start making a decent pie dough that doesn't fall apart. I don't know what to do. And I feel so bad when I get these emails. I mean, I just want to reach through the computer screen and take these tortured souls by the hand and tell them to take a deep breath and put on some relaxing new age music and that everything is going to be just fine. It provided they do these five things, of course. First, make sure that you're cutting in the fat enough. This is the source of a lot of cracking problems, not to mention the source of a lot of tough crust. Because if the fat isn't cut in enough, you're going to get these dry, floury pockets where the dough wants to break apart. Okay, so here I am cutting in the fat by hand. And at first I've got these nice big chunks and flakes of fat at this point, but the fat isn't well distributed. So I'll just keep cutting and just keep cutting and cutting. Now, how long do you cut in the fat? How long do you go? Well, my friend, the late Marion Cunningham, who wrote all those wonderful Fanny Farmer cookbooks, she had a great expression that I just loved. She used to say, cut in the fat until everything looks like it's been touched by the fat. Which is really just another way of saying to make sure you don't see a lot of dry flour in your bowl. And notice a difference between the mixture you see on the left and the mixture you see on the right. The one on the left is all floury and chunky. The one on the right has a variety of fat chunk sizes, but it's more uniform than the stuff on the left. The uh, color is often a telltale sign that you've cut enough too. You see the mixture on the right, it's more of a buttery off-white color. That indicates more even distribution of the fat. That's what you want yours to look like. Number two. And this is common sense, but you have been so spooked about adding the water to your dough that maybe you can't see the obvious. And that is that your dough is probably dry and cracking because you didn't add enough water. Makes sense, right? Now, listen very carefully. It's time to get over your fear of adding water to your pastry. We're not gonna be mamby-pamby about this anymore and do it in little tentative drips and drizzles and worry about it the whole time. Instead, we're going to man up, cowboys and cowgirls, and we're going to pour it over the top all at once. Then we're going to take our big pastry fork and stir it all up. The type of stir we're going to employ is what I call a stir toss, which looks like this. The idea is to moisten everything while the mixture is still nice and loose, instead of pressing it all together right away when you start stirring. Now, if you've done everything I've told you up to this point, your dough is going to come together pretty quickly and become nice and packable so you can do the next step. And I'll show you that in the second half of this video. You see over there. 